Hey guys, how's it going? Tifty here, and today we're dealing with pyros. Now this is a really requested episode from you guys. Apologies it's taken me a while to get round to it, but I've been collecting footage, writing down notes, and analysing my encounters so I can put this episode together for you guys. So I will be focusing on the demo man, but bear in mind that most of these tips should apply to other classes as well. So the way we're going to break it down is we're going to look at first the real close and personal situations that you're most likely going to run into, and then we're going to look at the medium to long range situations, we're going to briefly discuss air blasting, and then I've got a few other final points to chat with you guys about. So let's jump straight in. So the first technique I wanted to talk about was the sticky at your feet and retreat. Now I seem to have made that rhyme and you're welcome, don't mention it. But yeah, this is the most common technique that you'll use when you have your stickies out and you're coming face to face with a pyro at short range. This tends to work quite well if you're able to react quickly enough, have maybe a couple of meters spare to kind of get that sticky in between you. If you are using this technique, obviously try and make sure you detonate whilst the sticky is kind of in between you and the pyro if you like, because then you might be able to juggle them away as well, which is kind of an added bonus. Obviously this is bound to probably get a little bit of damage onto yourself as well so you've got to be careful with that. When you are retreating try and make that retreat as unpredictable as possible. But yeah this is the one I use the most purely because I often have my sticky bomb launcher out and then it's making the best out of a bad situation. In this example here I'm on Borneo and I'm coming around this corner here up the stairs and boom I've got a pyro right in my face. Because he's got the scout with him as well I think the only option really here is to retreat back from the way I came. So what I'm going to do is immediately put a sticky at my feet, retreat, put another one down at my feet and I'm able to luckily take him out. In this particular example I had a medic on which probably helped but it does tend to work. You can usually just about make it out alive. So this second technique I've called the switcheroo. I don't know what that means, I'm, I apologise. So yeah, let me try and explain exactly what I mean here. So if you come face to face with a pyro around a corner, in my experience pyros have been generally conditioned to chase people. They obviously have to do that a lot throughout the game and so in that split second they're going to expect you to run in a particular direction and that direction is you know, obviously away from them. So if you can actually choose a different direction to that, that can sometimes gain you a valuable one or two seconds to kind of use to your advantage. So I've got a couple of examples here of exactly what I mean. Here I'm on swift water and I'm coming out of my spawn. I've just been ambushed by this pyro from behind. I'm in a lot of trouble. In that split second, he's expecting me to run right out of here and straight forward. It's the direction I'm going in, it's away from him, it just makes sense. But in this particular example, what I've done here, I've actually spun back round, put a sticky kind of down at my feet. And like I said, it doesn't always work, but in this instance it did work and it's given me that valuable extra one or two seconds to, you know, get a sticky in between us and get out of there. In this second example, I'm on Swijin. Is that how you say it? I've never really known, to be honest. But I'm on the point, I've got two pyros chasing me. I'm in an awful lot of trouble here. They're either side of me. I imagine they're both bound to be thinking that I'm going to run backwards, away from them. So what I do is, with all the flames and all the chaos, I actually run back towards them the way I came. And I'm able to make a quick escape and actually just about survive with my life. Now this final example, I'm actually playing Medic, but it just perfectly demonstrated what I mean. We're on 2-4 and I'm being chased by this pyro and I'm completely helpless, I'm a Medic, I'm in a corner. But this just goes to show exactly how much extra time you can get by running in an unexpected direction. So he's clearly expecting me to run away from him and across this kind of wooden walkway. Instead I'm just going to jump behind him in the direction he's come from and then do exactly the same again. And although, you know, I'm not actually doing any damage, I'm kind of messing around here, but I've gained valuable seconds. If I was a damage dealing class, I'd probably be able to, you know, do damage to him and just about survive this situation. So yeah, I thought this was one of the more interesting points to kind of discuss today. And it doesn't always work, sometimes it fails miserably and you end up just stuck on the pyro or just, you know, running to your death. But sometimes, you know, if you've got nothing to lose, sometimes this does actually work and it works surprisingly well. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the use of your pipes. Now this obviously isn't really a technique, it's just an area of the demo man I really wanted to talk about. If you are confident with your grenade launcher and you can get a couple of hits onto the pyro, then you're sorted. But again, at close range, you're going to take a lot of self damage. One technique I don't use a lot, but I know you can use is if you actually use a pipe to both get damage out onto the pyro as well as actually jumping away at the same time. It only works in certain situations, but it's worth trying out actually, and it's actually good fun as well to try out. Sometimes I find that 
pipes are the best way like if you are really low and you're fairly confident that you're going to die it's a great way to assure that they go down with you i know that's not a great tip but sometimes at the very minimum i kind of want to assure that that pyro at least goes down with me but the best way I like to use pipes is actually alongside the stickies and kind of using it as like a one-two. Having a trap down, they walk over that, they take a lot of damage and then you just finish them off with a single pipe. That can work really well and I'm actually thinking about doing a video on just this topic and kind of how you can use the two together. So yeah, finally I wanted to briefly talk about getting the fudge out of there. Obviously in some situations that's going to be the best option and it's difficult knowing when that's the right thing to do but that's something you kind of gradually learn as you play the game more often. It's a super important skill to have and it's also if you've actually got the means to do it if you see what I mean, if you've got an escape route, if you've got enough health to do like a sticky bomb out of there or what have you. Here we're on Powerhouse. I'm sticky jumping up here. I caught a glimpse of that pyro in the corner of my eye. I didn't think he was coming towards me, so I kind of risk actually going into him. Unfortunately, he's kind of chasing this spy out here. And so luckily I've got a ledge to my left and that's a great escape route for me. I can drop down there and immediately I'm kind of far away from him. I'm not going to take the stairs. That's the obvious route to take. He's going to run down there probably. So yeah, by jumping off the left of that ledge, I've got a decent amount of distance from him and I'm able to take him out quite nicely. Another example on the same map here, this pyro is kind of a few metres away, it's not as bad as it could be but I don't particularly want to fight around here so once I've grabbed that ammo I'm actually just going to jump away, get out of there, so from this distance he's you know, a lot less of a threat. So it's just being aware of your health and if that's an option that's open to you. Okay, so at medium to long range, things are very different. You're going to have much more of the upper hand against the pyro. You've got the traps, you've got area control. There's a lot you can actually do here. The first thing I want to talk about is kind of using barriers. I'm using your stickies to basically put down a very simple barrier in between you and the pyro so they can't basically charge you. This is very similar to kind of putting a sticky at your feet and retreating, but the difference is it can be slightly in front of you, obviously, and it's not about detonating it immediately. It's about using that to control the area. And if they do come forward, then it's sure yeah detonate it take them out but actually you'll find that a lot of pyros will see that and be smart enough to stay back or try and take another route towards you so yeah if they run towards you you detonate but yeah if they don't and you've kind of got a successful barrier you can then kind of use your stickies or pipes to put out the damage to the pyro whilst keeping them at that distance so in this example on Borneo, we're pushing the cart just to this point here. I look around the corner and we've got a pyro. So immediately I'm going to put a sticky kind of at my feet and just immediately move back away from the threat. This pyro is a little bit on the WM1 side, shall we say. He's very keen, he sees a lot of blue players, you know, it's fair enough. So he runs towards me and I detonate that and I just simply continue this process. Like if he wants to come towards me, that's fine. I'm just going to put another one down and, you know, make sure at all times, even towards the end there, I've got a sticky in between me and him uh, and so I'm able to comfortably take him out. In this second example on King Kong, I'm kind of in this lower passage here and I've spotted this pyro and the, notice immediately the first thing I do is I put a sticky immediately between us. This pyro is fairly smart, he's seen that he's going to back off and actually switch over to his flares. So now we've got a bit of a standoff but I should be able to win this, I've got way more firepower than him at long range so you know I can push him back and, and finish him off quite nicely. Now finally I briefly mentioned this before but if you are able to you can actually juggle the pyro around. Uh, it doesn't always work but sometimes if you can do that you can move them away from you further or just you know have them have slightly less control over the battle. So I briefly wanted to talk about the flare guns that the pyros use. As we saw in that last example, I've got a barrier down, they switch over to flares. So as always, you just gotta kind of make sure that you're moving unpredictably. The key thing for me is the moment you see a flare fired, make sure wherever you were about to be, whichever direction you're going in, make sure you're not gonna be in that exact location where they thought you were gonna be, if you see what I mean. If they're good, they're predicting that you're gonna be a couple of meters to the right or left or what have you. So just making sure you're changing directions at that, that precise moment in particular is really important. Obviously if you have been set alight then making sure you don't get hit by a flare is critical because well it's literally it does mini crits I believe so it's best to try and avoid the line of sight keep the barriers up maybe actually retreat from the situation to health packs. So that leads me to one final thing that relates to these points. If you have been set alight but you're not still directly next to the pyro and under that threat I've always been very reluctant to sticky jump but in reality this isn't necessarily a good habit to have because often you can actually sticky jump to health and it's the quickest way to get healed back up. Obviously it depends on the situation and on your health but try to remember that a good sticky jump probably going to take less than half your health and if it gets you to that health pack quickly and you know you're going to be safe on the way there then yeah go for it. 
So a decent pyro will obviously be using the air blast against you and this should make them way more effective against you. Firstly, I would favor the sticky over the pipe just because you have that little bit of extra control over when you detonate. So what you can do is you can throw the sticky at them, wait a fraction of a second. If you see that they air blast it back, then you know you can avoid detonating that and avoid the damage altogether. If it hits the floor next to them and the bomb is clearly armed, you know you've waited the time you need to wait, then yeah, you can detonate and you're you're good to go. And the second thing about stickies is you don't actually have to aim directly at them. You can aim to their sides, making it a little bit trickier for them to actually air blast it back. On the other hand, if you're using a pipe, you have to one, aim it directly at them, and two, if they air blast it or not, you have no idea and there's nothing you can do about it. You can kind of use barriers as we discussed before. And they may try and blow those barriers away, but sometimes you can kind of overwhelm them with the amount of bombs and stuff you can get down. So you can put a couple of barriers down, throw some pipes. Usually, if you're not super close, you can kind of overwhelm them, like I said, and take them out. I find if I am using a barrier, I just need to keep an eye on it, make sure it's replenished if they do blow it out of the way. Sometimes you can just keep doing that and actually wait for the right moment, if you like, to actually either detonate or switch over to pipes and take them out. Obviously, if there's bombs flying all over the gaff, retreating may be the best option option and you know as you get further away it's going to be a lot harder for them to actually get a direct hit with your reflected shots. Obviously you're going to want to avoid ledges and being in between uh, a ledge and a pyro. So in this example here um, I'm on upward. Unfortunately I come around this corner and boom there's a pyro right up in my grill. So going towards him now is suicide if he's a decent pyro and willing to air blast me off the edge of the cliff. So immediately I'm backtracking. I'm going right. So yeah, he does air blast me. I'm going to take this opportunity to sneak around this corner and get some barriers down in front of me. Something for him to think about while I, again, retreat further back and then I can just keep replenishing this trap and eventually he becomes impatient and I'm able to take him out. So some final pointers to mention really quickly. One I briefly touched upon there, traps. These work really well for pyros because they tend to love corridors and they love chasing you down them and burning you alive and all that good stuff. So if you are being pursued and you've got a little bit of a head start, putting a few traps down just works to treat with them. And as always, even if you haven't necessarily seen one coming, make sure you got that trap down anyway. If you're having to stick around on a control point or what have you, I've talked about this before, preparation, getting stickies down just for emergencies, basically owning that space. Secondly, a quick note about the cart. Be wary of the ambush just as you cap. Pyros tend to love hiding around the corner and the moment you've capped that point, jumping out and burning the entire team alive. I often actually find myself pulling slightly back when we're about to cap a point putting some stickies down so I can counter that ambush if it does happen. Often you can actually hear them coming, um, that's another good point. That flame is actually really loud, so as soon as you hear one, just you know, you can sometimes get that little bit of extra time to react to them. And finally, a pretty obvious one, but it's best to have plenty of health to absorb the damage if you are going to have an encounter with a pyro. So if you see one and you have the choice to engage or not, make sure you're comfortable with how much health you have. That is everything I wanted to talk about today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. It was a really interesting topic to kind of research and figure out some of these techniques for. I know you guys have requested, you know, dealing with demos a lot. That's another one I have on my list. So I hope to get that to you guys as well one day soon, hopefully-ish. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree with what I've said. If you have any other ideas, I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.